standard in which they kept their horses then? The orphans? What was the, how did they, what made them different than Christianity and Judaism in certain parts of, his, of Islam, or Muslim um, societies, and the treatment of the orphans? Oh, the treatment of the orphans? Let me tell you this much, okay? The Sultan, the Khilafat was given to Sultan Selim. He was a Sultan before, but became a Khalifa. When the last Abbasid Khalifa then went down to Egypt and he presented him with the Jubba of the Holy Prophet ﷺ with the belt and with the sword, and it is an order from the Prophet that now the Khilafat is going to continue through the Ottomans. It is very well known, in those times especially, and only up to recently in this world, that the person who pierces his ears is a slave. You understand? Free people, they don't pierce their ears. There is a sign of slavery. And when you show a lot of flesh, it is a sign of slavery. Rich people, honorable people, they wear beautiful fabrics, cloths. One layer, two layers, three layers, four layers, they show, they cover their whole body, you understand? Those who are showing the flesh, it is a sign of slavery, which is majority of the world today. Everybody wants to be naked and everyone's piercing here, 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 everywhere they're piercing, showing their slavery to this world. And when he went to the tomb of the Prophet, he crept inside. He opened his front and he crept inside so that his chest is rubbing the floor, his face is rubbing the dust. That is how much love and affection and honor he's showing to the Prophet, saying that I am the conqueror of this world, but I am nothing. Just like his ancestor, Sultan Mehmed Fatih, wrote a poem. And he says, what did he say? Huh? Huh? That's not what he says. He says, I don't want this. He says, I don't. How do you say that in Turkish? You, compiler, not you. Huh? He's saying, Stimurum? What does it mean? I don't want this. What did he say? I don't want this rain if it's not falling for your sake. I don't want this sun if the sun is not shining for your sake. Whose sake? For the Prophet's sake. He's saying, I don't want all these nice winds that is coming. I don't want, I don't want anything that is not coming from you. I don't want, he says, I will burn a thousand Constantinopoles just to get one smile from you. And when he crept into the prophet's tomb and he saw a broom that is made from peacock feathers, that is used as a broom in the Prophet's tomb. He took one, he broke it, and he put it in his turban. It's like this, saying that now I'm your servant. Now he says, I'm your servant, I'm a slave to you, to the Prophet, to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And everyone else that is in the kingdom belongs to the Sultan. <laughs> you understand? Now I'm going to show you how they treat the orphans. They take the orphans, and they look at them with those ones that have some light, some intelligence. They look at them when they have different secrets that are in them and they took them and they train them. They don't cast them aside. Some they're taking them from those ones who are not even Muslims. They're saying, come. Now, don't worry, you're an orphan. The Prophet was an orphan too. 
Now, it is everyone's responsibility to take care of you. You are not going to run around by yourself. Because to serve an orphan, no? There is a big blessing that comes down in Islam. One of the practices no? of what? Ashura is to pat an orphan's head. You get blessings. Patting means to be kind, to love, to show compassion to an orphan. Because in the old days, it is kind of hard to find one that is not connected anywhere. Because when their father and their mother pass, there is going to be an uncle or an aunt or somebody that is going to take them right away, that they are not going to be left alone. And now, orphans have become, again, like it was in the first Jahiliya, without any rights. Because there is no longer the state of Islam. Are the states we have, there is no longer the state of Islam. There is no longer the ability now, or the compassion now, because he's not ruling, to take care of that orphan and looking at that orphan the way that the Prophet is looking at them. So, I just said, huh? today. Look at it. We are all orphans now. We are all orphans. So many of us, we don't have father, we don't have mother. If we have, they are not in this way. We are left alone. There's no real support. Hmm. At least we can say, physically our shaykh left us. <laughs> we are orphans. But, we find our place. We find our place and we find our use in the way of truth. And we're going to take that and we're going to run with it. Because the orphans, they are very loved by the Prophet and they are loved by all Prophets. This is the sign of Prophethood. That he's going to surround himself by poor people, the widows and the orphans. Those ones that you see surrounding themselves as uh, too much high-class people. This is the question that Heraclius, the uh, king of, Abyssin, uh, of the Byzantines, the emperor, asked Ibu Sufyan. And saying, who are the people around him? He says, oh, they are useless people. What useless people? Orphans, widows, poor people, useless, he says. Don't you know that Jesus surrounded himself the same way that all the prophets that they do? So, okay, I'm an orphan too. It's, there's a lot of secrets in that. Because now we're not looking for physical father. We're looking for a spiritual father. Physical will pass. It has a beginning, it has an end, it will pass. It doesn't mean anything. It is a spirit that really has no beginning or end. So many times is that physical father that is in front of us that is preventing us from finding that spiritual one. When we find that, we're on our way, inshallah. Wa min Allahu tafiq al fatiha. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah. This much is enough, inshallah. Assalamu alaikum wa